I'm Greg, and welcome back to Mango Cove Scuba, where today I'm sharing my five tips to getting the absolute best out of your underwater footage. Whether you're shooting stills with DSLR or video with a GoPro, these tips are to help make sure that you get the absolute most out of every dive. Tip number one, lights, lights, lights. Whether you're shooting still or video, the absolute best bang for your buck when it comes to getting better underwater footage is to invest in some lights. Lights are gonna be critical in replacing a lot of the lost color that happens when we go on a dive. For still, I shoot with dual DS125 substrokes from Hycolite. And when I'm shooting video, I use dual Kraken 3500 underwater video lights. These days I'm shooting a lot less still. Um, these are huge, they're very cumbersome to take underwater as you can see how big this housing is. But if that's your thing, there are many other options out there in much smaller packages if you're ready to invest that kind of money into some underwater still lighting options. Uh, you also don't need DSLRs anymore. I've seen incredible results with even GoPros or other compact and mirrorless uh, cameras that really can hold up against these larger DSLRs. For video, hands down, uh, my favorite thing to shoot these days, especially with how affordable it is to get into the GoPro line of cameras to get great 4K footage. I'm using dual uh, Kraken 3500s here. With two of them, you're talking about 7,000 lumens worth of light. They've got a great color temperature, so your footage is gonna look natural. Um, but they do take a little bit of getting used to. You know, you don't always have to go down and fire them up to full power and just blast light at your subject. A lot of the most dramatic footage comes when you can create contrast with shadows on your subjects to really make the, the lines in the scene pop and make your subjects really stand out against the background. Tip number two, stabilize your footage. When you're shooting stills, your strobes are gonna eliminate a lot of the shape that you would otherwise experience with video. With video, there's two main things that you can do to get the absolute smoothest footage, minimizing your shake. Number one is you can use a tray like this. When you pick out your tray, make sure you find one that has a lot of rigidity to it. The original GoPro tray I had was kind of flimsy. And when you put the lights on it, you got a lot of flex. So my footage was a little shaky. The second thing you can do is take advantage of the features that the camera itself has to minimize any kind of shape that you would get when taking video. Number one is HyperSmooth, which does a great job of eliminating any shake or any kind of sketchy footage that you might have but also shoot at a higher frame rate, like 60 frames per second. So you can slow that down and still get crisp and smooth video footage anytime you're taking video of fast moving fish or other types of critters. Tip number three, adjust your settings accurately. These are the settings that I love to use when I'm shooting with my underwater cameras. For stills, I usually go with these settings. And for video, I usually shoot with these settings. It's also important to know what the settings do so you can adjust them on the fly. When it comes to things like exposure in the GoPro, I find that the picture, especially underwater, can oftentimes be overexposed. So on a bright sunny day, I'll dial back the exposure one or two stops. The GoPro also kind of fizzles out when you get into higher ISOs, so you want to make sure that you're shooting with ISOs that make sure your footage is going to look as good as it possibly can. Shutter speeds and, and GoPros uh, built-in color and stuff like that. Um, usually I just leave those on auto. Um, white balance is another big one, especially for these action cameras. I find that the auto white balance on a GoPro when you're shooting underwater is terrible. A lot of times it has trouble keeping up, especially when you're near the surface and you've got light rays coming down on your subjects. And the camera can't do a really good job of figuring out what white should be. So either shoot in native, or in this case, I know that these lights have a color temperature of about 5,000 Kelvin or so. So I'll set that before I go on my dive. Tip number four, filters. Whether you're shooting with still or video, there's a number of different filter options that you have to add some red back into your scenes that would otherwise get filtered out by the water. For shooting with digital stills, um, they make these little plastic cutouts. It's like a piece of uh, acrylic gel that you can actually tape over the, the sensor port on your lens so that you can get a little bit of red back. I don't use that too often because I find that the strobes do a great job of replacing all that light anyway. For video, however, uh, oftentimes, especially when you're shooting subjects that are outside the reach of your video lights, 
filters are gonna do a great job of restoring the color. For the GoPro, I use the flip system made by Backscatter. This thing is great. Um, I don't know that they have a flip out for the Hero 9 just yet. I think they just released theirs for the Hero uh, 8 because they changed the actual uh, shape of the cameras. But this is the one I would use on my old Hero 7 and it does a great job. Um, I find that using the video lights actually doesn't require to use the filter all the time, but you can if you want. Um, especially if you're shooting macro, you definitely don't need these. Uh, red filters because the subject is going to be so close to the lens anyway that your video lights are going to take care of that. But filters are going to go a long way to help them restore some of that lost red when you're on your dives or if you're snorkeling. And finally, tip number five, get the best shot you can in camera and shoot with post-production in mind. The post-production tools, especially when you're talking about things like Photoshop and After Effects and Premiere Pro and DaVinci and the different programs that are available to enhance your digital footage, it's easy to say, ah, oh, I'll just fix it in post. But in order to start from the best possible position when you import your footage into your favorite editing program is to get the best possible shots that you can when you have the camera in the water. Make sure that you're framing your shots with the ability to also manipulate them in post. One of the great things about shooting in higher resolutions like 4 and now 5K is that you have a little bit of leeway to zoom, pan, and transition between shots to make sure that if it wasn't just right in camera, you can correct it in post. But again, you're gonna have a much easier time if you're shooting your footage in camera with the best settings possible. And these have been my five tips to help you get the most out of your underwater photos and video. Whether you're shooting with a DSLR or a GoPro or anything in between, the most important thing is to get out there and do it. Practice makes perfect. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching Mango Cove Scuba, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And remember, take pictures and leave only bubbles.